What is he talking about? To make you the way you would have liked. There's a contradiction here. Tazar. Because Allah says in the Quran. This is Hadith. Allah says in the Quran. who paints your picture in the womb of your mother however he likes in your image he paints in the womb of your mother however who likes you don't get a choice sorry you can put all the makeup on now but Allah has designed you Allah has you had no say for Hassan bin Sabit to sit on the pulpit to say in his presence in an audience of Sahaba on the face of it there's a contradiction Allah says I create in the womb of your mother your image however I like Hassan says Ya Rasulullah it appears Allah created the way you. There's a contradiction here. There's a contradiction here. But remember what I told you at the beginning of my lecture. A contradiction that manifests itself in the Quran and Sunnah is a contradiction in our mind. There is no contradiction in the Quran and Sunnah. It's our lack of ability to understand the reality of that, that is why the principle is when you don't understand anything about the Prophet you rest your akal at the way of Rasulullah Even as Ali says, oh, oh people, don't judge Sharia with your akal. Why if you judge Sharia with your akal, you'll become a, a misguided. He gives an example, just as an example I'm giving. He says when you do masa on your socks, where do you do masa uh, on your leather socks? Do you do masa on top or underneath? He says your akal says the dirt is underneath, so you should do masa underneath. He says akal says underneath, but Sharia says on top. Don't try to understand Sharia with your akal. Because the akal of Sharia is much more advanced than your akal. But you should aspire to go to that direction. And when you go to that direction, uh, there's a very difficult share of Allah Ma'ibala. I'm not going to uh, 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 explain it. But he says, Teri nigahe paak se dono murad paagay akal ghayab o justaju ishq huzuru don't ask me to translate that and go. Hey, that's another two hours lecture. <laughs> anyway, there's a contradiction here. On the one hand, Allah says in the Quran, I create you in the womb of your mother the way I like. Hassan says, Oh beloved, it appears that Allah made you the way you like. Now there's a secret here. Do you? Ladies and gentlemen, have any control over yourself in the womb of your mother? No. So Hassan is saying, Ya Rasulullah, you had control even over there. You had control, of course. Allah made you the way you wanted. Does a fetus have control over its... No. He's saying that even when you're in the womb of your mother, you are muhtar. You are of authority. You are of ability. You are of sanity. You are of capability. Now you understand why Ross Park was able to learn 15 Sabara in the womb of his mother? The way you like. But how is it that on the one hand Allah does what He likes and Rasul does what He likes? I'm only going to finish on this so we can understand there is no difference in what Allah wants and what His Rasul wants. You know that verse I read about the namaz timings? قَبْلَ تُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا وَمِنْ آنَاءِ اللَّيْلِ وَأَطْرَافِ النَّهَارِ The Quran specifies certain times. You know what the last part of that verse is? The last part of that verse is 
Oh my beloved, I've specified all these timings so that you become happy. Mahbub, namaz ka time mein ne bataya, lekin bataya is liye taake tu razi ho jai. I specify these times for your happiness. And then Allah says, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Oh Allah, oh my beloved, Allah will give you so much that you are happy. But all I want to say is one thing. How can there be a contradiction in what Allah wants and what His Rasul wants? There can be no contradiction. Allah elaborates on in the Quran through a very clear verse. He says, expresses his message and there was one who came with the truth what is the truth of the Quran on the one hand Allah talks about there's one who came with the Sid who came with the Sid what is Sid Quran who came with the Sid come on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَالَّذِي جَاءَ بِالصِّدْقِ There was one who came with the truth. Truth is Qur'an. Who came? Rasulullah. وَالصَّدَّقَ بِهِ And there was one who confirmed the truth. All Mufassirin say this portion of the verse refers to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. بہتوں نے تصدیق کی لیکن جو میرے صدیق نے تصدیق کی اللہ نے اس تصدیق پہ فرمایا وَصَدَّقَ بِهِ Many people affirm this Qur'an but صدیق اکبر His affirmation is acknowledged by the Qur'an and then Allah says أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ This whole party is a party of people of taqwa muttaqeen why Allah knew a time would come where people would question the <laughs> where they would question the authenticity and the validity of Siddiq Akbar. So that's why he clarified it in the Quran. But look at the part of the verse I want to refer you to. Allah says, <laughs> These people who Allah refers to in this verse. Whatever they want, whatever their desire is what Allah wants. So therefore, O oh people, we want the desire of Allah, we want the happiness of Allah, but Allah wants the happiness of Rasulullah. That is why Hassan bin Sabit is saying, Oh my beloved, you weren't helpless in the womb of your mother. It appears Allah created you with your own will. I.e. even though he, he fashions the uh, uh, fetus in the way that he likes in the womb of the mother, according to his will. But even at that juncture, in the womb of your blessed mother, even at that juncture, Allah said, my beloved, at this juncture, I can do what I want, but tell me, what do you want? It's your desire that is my desire. That is why when Rasulullah said something that may on the face of it contradict what Allah has said, but no, it isn't a contradiction. Why? Because whatever comes out by Rasulullah is automatically accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why when Siddiq Akbar, because he's also party to this verse, when Siddiq Akbar was walking after a, a war, 
he was uh, coming back after a ghazwa, I don't remember which ghazwa, he was walking and someone asked him, he's very tired, shattered, and someone asked him, excuse me, where is such and such a companion? And in the state of fatigue and tiredness, he said he's coming. He said he's, he's coming. Actually, that Sahabi who he was asking about had passed away. He had passed away. He had become Shaheed. But when Siddiq Akbar said, He is coming, Allah said to Mulkul Maut, O oh, Mulkul Maut, you have taken his soul in accordance with my will. But because my Siddiq has said, He is coming, therefore I cannot allow the words of Siddiq Akbar to be a lie. If he has said he is coming, then return his soul back to his body so that the words of Siddiq Akbar can be fulfilled. <laughs> This is Lahumma Yashaul. Whatever they want, Allah, re Allah responds. Allah says, The time of death is written, not a second before, not a second after. But, O oh Musa, if you want extension, I'll give you an extension. Why? When it comes to love, the goalposts change. When it comes to love, the rules of the game change. When it comes to law, Allah says, This, this, and this. But when it comes to love, Allah says, Lahumma yasha'una inda rabbihim. Whatever you want, Allah wants that. That is the essence of this. So our function tonight is a not simply a recitation of love. It is a pure act of worship. Why? Because although we are praising Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in effect, it is a way of obliging and conforming and reenacting the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore it is an act of worship. May Allah enhance that. Amen. I was told 15 minutes, but as you know, with the old diesel engine, the brakes are as they are.